Welcome to the IBM Podcast Network. It's very, this art is very brutal business. Because you are very greedy and you want to possess people. You know, you want to become a, because it's a craving for immortality, you know. So this mortality is very minor. Hello beautiful people, welcome to Anything But Bollywood, where we talk to creators, filmmakers and curators of the moving images. But it's with one condition that they be working in spheres that are anything but Bollywood. So having said that, Bollywood is this ginormous monster that devours everything that's in its path and we're podcasting out of Mumbai, so we will invariably bump into people who have a toe or a finger or a foot in uh, Bollywood. So, to deal with this contentious issue, we're introducing you to our Anything But Bollywood scoring, uh, also known as ABS. So, an Anand Patwardhan gets a 10-pack and a Salman Khan gets a 0-pack. So, our guest this week scores a perfect 10-pack AB rating. Uh, he is a dual national award and Filmfare Award winner. He is a director, a screenwriter and a documentarian. His landmark cult classic film has been dubbed the Great Indian LSD Trip. He is Kamal Swaroop. He's most prominently known for his film Om Dar Badar. If you haven't seen it, please do check it out. It's truly one of its kind. It's possibly India's only Dadaist surrealist film. But one of the main reasons I wanted to have him on the show was because of a recent work of his, which was Battle for Banaras, which I saw. And um, it was refused certification by the CBFC. But I think it's a very important film for today's time. Uh, and it was a film I recommended on another episode. So that's a film I definitely want to talk about. But uh, first, let's start at the beginning. So what has been your journey like? How did your journey into filmmaking begin? Uh, see, I'm from Ajmer and originally from Kashmir. And uh, I grew up watching films. And uh, I didn't know what to do in Ajmer because uh, my brother was a doctor and one engineer and I wanted to leave the town. So uh, those days we used to hear about this uh, parallel cinema and um, you know, a lot of films based on Indian literature. So Times of India was uh, highly recommending them and doing a lot of writing on them. And there was already a movement uh, in literature called Aduni Kanya or Nai Kanya all over the country. And most of the films are based on those uh, uh, literature. And uh, there were these new stars coming in parallel cinema like Manikol and Kumar Shani and Satya De Dube, Govind Nilani and, uh, and uh, Manal Sain had just revived with, uh, um, what is that film called, uh, with Utpal Dutt and Swasani Mule. I don't know. Uh, I just I'm forgot. not very good uh, with this. And um, uh, so, uh, fantastic times, like uh, Ray got survived, uh, revived, uh, Seema Bad, Pratidandi, Mrinal again, Bhuvan Shom, that film. Mm. Then uh, Mrinal, uh, uh, Calcutta 71, so we used to read about those films in magazines called Filmfare or Madhuri. And uh, most of the stories, uh, most of the films are based on a uh, f- uh, stories from Sarika. There was an Indian magazine, Hindi mm. magazine. And uh, we were familiar both with the stories. And uh, most of the stories we had read what were coming. But we are not able to see this film because they were not getting a kind of a big uh, release. But uh, we thought, you know, there's a possibility of getting into that space. Mm. And uh, otherwise, uh, Bombay, Bollywood space was, you know, you know, I mean, it was a dream world. And um, a lot of people uh, who were getting into this space were from Pune Film Institute, like Manikal and Kumar Shani and even the from technicians, KK Majan and uh, Virind. And so we said, uh, why not try that? You know? And it wasn't very difficult to get into a Pune Film Institute those days. So we applied and we entered there. 
so in pune uh, there was a film industry and there was this new hope which was ffc you uh, now you it is nfdc so mm. then there was not much work you know because the television didn't exist that time there was a government uh, documentary production house which is films division and these were the opportunities you know so most of the people were saying ki okay you know like we'll write a script and maybe we'll get a chance in uh, ffc or something but they enjoyed the place the pune film institute because you was watching world cinema and fantastic films and beautiful films and you know like four films a day in morning you are in czechoslovakia afternoon you are in tokyo and evening you are in hungary and uh, you going through history films are about first world war second world war about some mythologies and it was a totally different zone than the but Bollywood. before you got to fti you hadn't even seen any of the films you had just read about it so yes how how did you, how did that connection happen because uh, we had read the stories you know, you know mm. the literature and when you're reading them you are imagining also because reading is a very active uh, activity you know mm. because you, you you are reading so you're imagining you know all the words that are written there you know the or descriptions so uh, you already bit seen them i remember i read uh, pathir panchali in when i was in fifth standard or sixth standard you know, you know and when i saw pathir panchali in pune it was almost as if i had already seen it you know, you know. Mm. and he 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 himself was very very uh, loyal to the text so the you know like so in a way you know like uh, now when i teach so i tell them people that everybody has his own way of editing or his way of visualizing or his way of mise-en-scene because while you read it you do it you know and all literature have their own kind of a vision you know and uh, kind of a construction they do a visual construction because most of the literature that is very successful is that which creates a kind of a imagination you know you see the they become live you know when you reading them you know, you know so they are more popular so there was an excitement that will i be able to do it you know and i also mm-hmm. want to do it you know so in a way everybody is a filmmaker you know born filmmakers mm-hmm. So after your time at FTII you uh, went on to uh, work for Richard Attenborough on Gandhi. So if you could talk us through that experience what was it like? See uh, uh Gandhi, there was a friend of mine called Suraj Jindal he was a producer. He has made uh, Katha Rajnigandha. I mean he began with the parallel cinema movement you know Rajnigandha with Vasu Chatterjee's uh, second and the first successful commercially successful film and he made shatran ke khiladi with satyajit ray and richard attenborough was an actor in that so i was very close to suraj jindal and uh, he got a chance to become an associate producer of the gandhi so they hired me so they hired me as a crowd controller and uh, to stand next to ben kingsley so whenever ban kingsley will say something you know i love to interpret to the uh, audience you know so that was fun because because you know like suppose he say something and people are clapping so there will be a certain kind of a rhythm in clapping you know one man claps two man clap three man four man then a row then the whole is like a thunder mm. so th- these are like almost like choreographing you know or say excitement people get up you know they don't get up together you know the way they look at mm. each other and they so the about the nature of the crowd you know that what i first time understood while uh, doing in gandhi you know it's like that indians are very restless you know you can't make them sit at one place for a long time 
and here you have to make 5000 people you know to stand at one point you know and then the shot will be ready you know were there any tricks that you learned along the way one i used to tell them the stories you know to keep them busy one thing second thing was that uh, uh best way to control a person was to just touch his feet you know so you create a <laughs> kind of a guilt in the other person you know i mean if he touches field you know you, he will do anything because it's almost like taking away all his power you know so they were tricks like that you know and of course the kind of a tricks gandhi was using you know so it's like um, there's a crowd you know which is uh, in a chaos chaos mode and they're running helter and skelter so the cavalry or the horse riders are attacking them you know so gandhi realizes if you are running helter and skelter and so you you can get hurt you know so he brings them together and makes them sit together very close so then it becomes a mass once it becomes a mass or a, like a organism mm. so the horses don't know where to put their hoops you know you know or so they can't do anything with this mass you know when these number of individuals turn into a one solid mass mm-hmm. you know so these were the strategies gandhi was uh, using and they actually use in the film also the nature of uh, dandi march you know, you know so one thing i learned from that film was that gandhi was an aesthetician you know of politics you know the for him the politics was a sequence of gestures mm. and they had a, a kind of a certain kind of aesthetics you know, you know so only one painter knows this in india atul dodia and you know, i just made a film on him so he uses gandhi ji as an artist of politics you know mm. so that i learned you know and there was a lot of influence later on the om dar bazar about non cooperation movement and protest and resistance so that what i learned mm. from and actually that's how the story of om dar bazar you said began on and, on that set yes i used to tell them the story to keep them busy so while telling them om dar bazar it grew you know so since we've got to om dar bazar i just want to tell people who don't know about the film the film was uh, made in 1988 and it was not at all well received at the time and over the course of 15 years it grew as this underground cult uh, film whose illegal copies were passed around and slowly it built until finally it got a release in theaters in 2014 so uh you look at the film man in one viewing i don't think maybe in multiple viewings also you can't necessarily make sense of it and um so i wanted to know most people would think after watching the film that there was no script but there was a script so can you talk us through that process of what was it like developing that script see uh, uh we didn't believe in the idea of story those days you know and we said the story you come to know in the end but while uh, watching a film or reading a uh, book it is that present moment you know and the kind of a emotionality or a hook you go through you know that's what more important is you know so i was uh, just playing on the concepts like what is name what is caste what is class what is breathing what is you know body parts what is fragmentation what is death so you know and create a scene around these concepts you know you know then weave them together and have a some kind of a semblance of a plot you know so there are three four plots or something you know so basically they were like finding some mise en scene to represent a concept you know you know mm. but at the same time we had some kind of a very very stupid uh, notions you know about things that i won't make sense i'll make nonsense you know i don't connect i will disconnect and all the all the kind of a fancy ideas you have when you are an adolescent and you want to make your own space you know you know so i won't mesmerize i want to make a film which is transparent you know all like or if you understand my film i will return your money you know all that kind <laughs> of a th- so basically it's taking a position which no other person hasn't taken you know because 
we had come to FTI and maybe I got a chance, you know, to make a film. So I must make something or do my best because maybe I'll never get a chance again to make a film, you know. You know. And uh, so take a position which is unique, basically, you know. That is the, your politics of survival, you know. Hmm. Like I didn't want to become like Govind Nalani, you know. Hmm. So I won't make, you know, you know those Arsatya or that thing or take a position of Shamba Nagal, you know. You know. Or uh, Mani Kumar and they had already taken, you know, made a f- huge mark, so... You can't follow that also. So, and uh, my sensibility also, you know, natural was more toward the surrealist and the Dadaist, you know. Mm. But there was a danger there also because the bureaucrats only supported the classical cinema. Mm. They didn't uh, support the non-classical or what you can say that, uh, you know, bit kind of a flamboyant or uh, not very neat and clean hmm. you know. so that was a kind of a uh, so the film had a problem they didn't know is it a commercial film or it's a art film because or a serious film because in a serious film you have to look serious all the time right. and this film had jokes yeah, and it has you know, a sense laughter of humor and humor. It's got songs and so it's not considered serious enough by the and actually it had a lot of Bollywood tropes as well yes, in it yes. um, so I wanted to know the, in terms of the script so then I, I read that you basically sat with it and you kind of took out pieces was that the process of the writing process was you know first version was written in English you know, you know which is by narrating people you know again and again and uh, uh, it, it is forming into a story but there was a one friend of mine called Navjeet Singh he was uh, uh, my junior in FTI very bright person from mm. South Bombay so he was working with me we, we used to work you know like suppose I tell him my idea you know let's say I'll you, you'll remember the friend you know. I'll tell him that uh, the Om has run away with the uh, diamonds, diamonds in the father's shoe Mm. Or soul, and uh, then the Lalaji comes back, you know, you know, and uh, he says, "Where are the diamonds?" You know, you know, mm. and uh, where are the diamonds? And he can't leave his room because that Angan is cursed by the fool Kumari right. that if you cross, You'll uh, die, yeah, right. something like that. You know. Now, I told this idea to my friend. You know, okay, I am. This is the plot, you know, next level plot. So I said, what to do now, you know? What should, how would you tell him? The jeweler. Jeweler is saying, the, where are the jewels, you know? We have to send them to Delhi. So this guy tells me coolly, you know, he's very, he was a very, he died, you know. And he said, you know, what we do that, uh, how would you tell him? I just fed you, you know. Means I made a churan of that diamond. I have just fed you in your food. And this guy, you know, this Navjeet, he tells me this and he leaves me laughing, you know. Because now I have to find a solution, you know. Because now diamonds are supposed to be in his stomach, you know. know. Now I have to have diamonds again somewhere, you know, because diamonds are forever, you know. know. So... Then I am parashan for about three, four days, you know, and this guy is not picking my phone, you know, because he knows that I'm going through a great torturous <laughs> process of finding a solution to it. Then I came with the solution of that. The Babuji tells him, yeah, I fed him, but for 15 days, you don't eat anything. Then you go and shit and uh, the diamond you will revive and you will become malamal, the, mm. you know, the, the frog land. So it ends up into frogland and they come to know that the frogs have diamonds or do they have di- diamonds, you know, you know. So that was a way of working, you know, and that's mm. how the surrealist work basically, you know. Mm. And of course, it's the other person, you know, while oh, there are some scenes, you know, where I'm alone and uh, and stuffing my mind with a lot of information and when it can't contain so much information, so it solidify and it... Uh, explodes into a dream image or something you know because mm. I have a 
theory that the stories are means to store information you know because there's so many information and how do you store because there's not enough space so the stories become means to store information mm. so and stories will take less space and you can deconstruct the story again retrieve all the information mm. so that is the basic thought so actually the question that i mostly wanted to ask you was that was any of it a mistake was there some happy accidents that you just then went with uh, was there things that you discovered in the edit that you didn't realize were happening uh, you so yeah so yeah all the know. time all the time the great insecurity that because you are constructing it is disintegrating you again integrate is disintegrating you know it's a constant that's mm. what the pulse is of the film so you're constantly struggling that is it making sense or it is not making sense you know so that is all the time and uh, in, in a way you know like uh, it's a it's a kind of a thing that before you delude others you know you have to delude yourself you know you know so you have to you'll see frogs everywhere you have to yeah. delude you know basically you know so and so much happened that that uh, the cameras broke down and uh, one whole schedule had washed away you know you know we had to go and shoot again mm. so i went to my friend money call you know you know i said this has happened everybody was laughing because yeah yeah you must be on the weed you know you know mm. or you must have broken the camera yourself <laughs> so money said something nice to me he said you know nature has rendered you harmless you know because we were we was you know money money used to say that become natural you know or swavik ho jao or we were from a different school we were we were artificial you know art mm. artificial you know so we were into constructing things okay we are talking to uh, kamal swaroop and we're going to take a little break now uh when we come back i wanted to ask you about the soundscape of the film okay hello there my name is navin narona and as a gay person in india i get asked a lot of stupid questions a beta is it lgbt or eligibility how do two men procreate bro is grindr better than tinder world we answer all these questions and much more on my podcast keeping it queer where i talk to individuals from the lgbt community in india and learn about their personal stories catch all the episodes on the ivm podcast app or any other podcasting app you like till then keep it queer all right we are back to anything but bollywood and we're talking to kamal swaroop i wanted to talk to you about the process of creating the soundscape of the film because i rewatched the film recently and it was amazing that there was no scene where there were two people conversing usually the stories were always told in the sound and the image was just like a placeholder so how did you come up with that was that a conscious thing or was that something that you created in the edit uh you mean battle of banaras or om darbadar om darbadar we are still on om darbadar say om darbadar the uh the person who was uh, working with me uh, in sound was uh, paddy one of the most brilliant person he was working with the aradhana studio and uh, rajat dholkia you know he was the music mm-hmm. director zuku. and zuku you know mm-hmm. everybody knows him he is called zuku jarrett so i mean the first principle about the dialogue was that um uh, uh, i should write something that uh, it generative it doesn't have a fixed meaning you know and the lines are very unfamiliar so so basic thing is to play with the grammar that the most of the words are familiar but when they are put together they don't make a definite sense you know it's almost mm-hmm. like that the subject and the object and the verb and the noun have got jumbled up you know you know so the it's a familiar but it doesn't make any sense because it's not grammatically correct you know so the listener tries to reprocess it you know and wants to make some sense you know that's the basic principle about so when i would be writing a dialogue you know so i would see to that that it's no more familiar you know that you heard in your life or people conversing with each other 
and uh, that was one uh, stand against the familiarity you know because the, my my again one principle that uh, i'll remove the familiarity so most familiarity comes in the dialogues you know because most of the dialogues we say are what we have heard or what people in realism or naturalism in so that was one thing the second thing was removing the familiarity so the most familiar thing in a commercial cinema is sex and violence you know, you know. so i removed the sex and violence part you know but as you saying about the sound so that was the approach to the dialogue but they were references so there is a game between the familiarity and the non familiarity in the dialogue then there are so many so many i mean the scenes by themselves are uh uh complete units but to scene and the next scene or the building the story or the plot you know i needed something to connect you know that would be a commentary kind of a thing but in somebody's voice like babu ji is or third person or something you know mm. like almost telling a story mm. but the scene by themselves a unit are independent of that telling a story narrating a story which is a totally a different kind of a track you know but the beauty of the scene is intact you know and uh, they might be part of the narration and not need not be part of the narration other reason could be that uh, uh the script was about eight hour long you know you know very very long you know and uh, now there's a production uh, hassles that will you be able to finish that so you are all the time reworking like suppose uh, some scene is taking about you know more time so you have to rewrite it now you can't shorten it you know you know but you have to find a representative image of that thought mm-hmm. within say 1 minute to 2 minute or 3 minute or something like that so you have to compress it but not cut it mm. so it means you have to invent a different image of representative of that uh, information or of that thought you know so that will be a constant uh, effort and anxiety you know uh, then the other uh, uh, is that and uh, since we are not able to deliver 8 hour you know i mean we, so other problem will be of uh, that it is falling apart you know because you, you know like maybe you are losing the connections so i think to keep that connection maybe i have i mm. went back to the you know finding some kind of a narration that would be the one the one thing will be that the, the shooting images is expensive you know the cameras and the units and there's time limit so this uh, sound guy he is a very very creative person and uh, fantastic as you know and very close friend so we were jamming with each other since we were in fti so he started jamming you know mm. you know like creating counterpoints to the images like in in uh, art films you don't emphasize on dialogues you know dialogues are part of the nature you know like mm. natural but uh, he realized that the dialogues were the most important thing in the film because they were funny they were very attractive so he he created them a certain loudness a melodramatic uh, loudness he mm. gave the, which i hated you know because i said you know like it's not you know it's not artistic to do that you know but he insisted on that and finally it worked because in vhs copies finally there were no visuals you yeah, know that was an amazing story uh, that i heard about that was the only dialogues and people were just listening to the dialogues you know it worked now of course we know om dar badar as a cult film but when it first came out what were the reactions to the film at that time they used to see me and laugh at me you know dar badar dar badar and uh, uh, it went to panorama i mean the national uh, award for and panorama they said i mean people doubted is it a film to begin with you know and of course it was not serious enough to be serious film and it was not commercial enough to mm. be commercial film so some people 
uh, uh, liked it, like uh, Samad group, Vivan Sundaram and uh, Tayyab Mehta and Bhupan Khakkar. Mm. These people appreciate the artistic the community. Artist, right. They appreciated the film. And of course, Mani and Kumar, they, they were supportive. But the people who really mattered in the bureaucracy or in the commercial industry, they, uh, I think, rejected it. So at that time, how did you deal with that rejection? Did it affect your confidence? Did it affect your belief? Yes. And uh, uh, it's like uh, uh, I had a problem with the uh, manager of the NFDC. So it was a loan. I was a producer. So there was a court case. As of, I, I mean, I was considered a defaulter because I, I didn't pay the loan. So then if you are a defaulter, you know, it becomes uh, very painful in the society because in the end, it's business, you know, it's mm. money. So dealing with this idea of being a defaulter and uh, not knowing how to deal with it, is a, it's, it can be very, very dangerous, you know. So, of course, you lose confidence, you feel guilty, you shy away from the people, you know, and uh, dealing with the court cases. And uh, people uh, haven't seen it. And even the, you know, becoming underground figure. Mm. Also, I mean, if you uh, are not uh, castled, then it can be dangerous, you know. I mean, I wasn't castled, but suppose I was castled. And I By had, castled, you mean? Castled means a kind of a security system, you know, mm. financial security system or a family support system or a community support system that I didn't have hmm. and uh, it's fine now it's, it looks fantastic image you know right. like it's a cult film and Kamal right. Ji has that but that time so the my generation or say uh, younger people they will be also very insecure with this kind of an image you know hmm. Now, okay, you know, one has survived right. this film. W- were there any ways that you that w- that you used to cope to survive to get through it? How did you How did you get through it? Um, means doing here and there odd jobs, you know, um, copywriter, advertising jobs here and there, documentaries, mm. but not uh, at the same time you losing that artistic. Uh, confidence mm. in you that is the because uh, you are uh, losing confidence mm. in you and uh, so that uh, creatively you don't want to take that kind of a risk anymore you know I, I did a lot of work like Omdar Bada means writing wise mm. But uh, I didn't have the confidence to pursue them. I still mm. have fantastic st- scripts. With mm. me. But then the you lose confidence. Was that why then there was such a long gap in your filmography? Yeah, I had uh, given up mm. of making a film, you know. But only thing is that I said, how do I survive then, you know. So I took this identity of Dada Sab Falke that I'm working on Falke, mm. I'm working on Falke. Mm. I did a book and what are you doing? I'm working on Falke. You know. mm. So I took this identity of Falke and did a lot of work related to Falke. That gave me an image also. Mm. So then I will uh, almost like pretend that I'm doing such a great work. Mm. So people don't understand it. You know, they don't deserve me. <laughs> so that was like uh, self-deluding again. Mm. But uh, in the end, uh, over a period of time, I made about 12 films on Falke, workshops and Rangbhumi and book and uh, uh, the Falke factory site, Mm. which is a huge site. So it worked because I I also feel that nothing goes waste Mm. in the end. So you actually talked about this idea of identity, right? And it's like you have to always... So do you think that you always need to kind of have this identity to exist then in your work? Yes, because, you know, like you're working for identity also, you know, because, I mean, uh, Omdra Bada has given me a fantastic identity and I'm proud of it. I mean, of course, uh, bad times, good times, but it's a fantastic identity. I will be always proud of it. I mean, and it was almost wished, you know. 
Mm. I mean, of course, it has its own danger, mm. but it was almost wished in to make a very, very exclusive space for yourself. Mm. And and there was a price that there's a kind of trade off for that. Then. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so since we were talking about Falke, I I wanted to ask why the obsession with Falke. Do you see yourself in Falke? Not really, but uh, the. One thing is that you know, like uh, I went into Falke to educate myself, you know, to go through the history and uh, what he went through, you know, like uh, the industrial revolution and coming up the sound and cameras and printing age and all the art movements. So by studying his life, I went uh, through the history of uh, art and culture and cinema. One thing is that, and the second thing is. Uh, I since he had about eight children, you know, the mm. work knowing about the children, seeing the relationship between the amongst the children, his family, so it gave me a kind of a model uh, that I could study and apply it to the world around, you know. So it it, it mm. became like a lab for me to understand the world, you know. Mm. So and uh, so, I think. I mean, uh, because your f- own family, you can't study, you know, you know, because they're too close. But here, I can, I could see, and study a family, and uh, so you know, like when I studied, started working. So I had a small uh, a, a book about Falke, fifteen pages, and so I divided his lifetime into. Seventy-four years from eighteen seventy to nineteen forty-four. Then one page, one year. Then I had uh, uh, what is happening, and that time, that year, in arts, technology, science, politics, you know, and it grew, and and it became a big escape for me. So the people used to say, "Are you ready now?" I said, "No, I have to still work on his father's character," you know. So his father was an astronomer, and he was a priest and a storyteller. So I'm said I know like he has, I mean the script has about 128 characters, you know. So I'm still studying father, and said, have you finished father? So I said no, uncle was a homeopath doctor. He was working on the railways. Now I'm studying the Indian railways. So it became like an escape for me also mm. because I'll, you know, like branch out here and there and there it's almost like that i had a excuse not to do it you know mm. but because that's what happens in a film when you're constructing it it will expand and you have to contract it all the time like a way you make a pot mm. you, know, you know and that's what is a pulse because it will expand and contract and that's a heartbeat so it's a part of the any work of art you do basically so you're actually very interested in this process and you have heard you talk about that you're interested in the process of, of making the film. So then how do you and when do you apply that full stop? Do you force yourself to do it? How does that happen? There'll be offshoots, you know. There'll be byproducts of this process, you know. Small, small. Maybe it is not way you, you know, like exact concrete image. Like industrially when you construct a film in Hollywood or Bombay, they all know. What is the end product? You know, and mm. everybody knows. Right. But uh, here, you, I you don't know. You know that what is the end product? You know, and that's the fun part of it. You know, because it's a surprise every time I sit in front of a computer in the morning when I used to write, and uh, I'll be so excited because I wouldn't know that what is going to happen. You know, mm. next moment, what kind of a line is going to come? Or what kind of a image is? Just going to emerge, so the whole the beauty is of the surprise. That's why, like, I wouldn't be able to do an industrial uh, film that you exactly know. So I don't approach the producers also because, you know, like, why ruin his life? You know, you know. Okay, we're going to take a break right now. Uh, we'll be right back. We're talking to Kamal Swaroop. Hi, I'm May, and I'm a huge fan of the indie music scene in our country a scene that's 
relatively underground, even though it sometimes speaks its head overground. But there's no shortage of talent, and I get the privilege of interviewing some of the most awesome musicians on my show. I've had the likes of Euphoria, Kirsch Kale, Hardcore, Randolph Coria. I've had singer songwriters, folk singers, electronic music producers, playback singers, rappers, fusion artists, instrumentalists, classical musicians, and so on. Whether mainstream or not, these people have chosen to release their original music, and these are the people currently shaping the direction in which our music scene is heading. Join me on my show every Monday and tune in to discover the unique talent coming out of India today. You can catch Made in India on your favorite podcasting app or our very own IBM podcast app. Uh, we are talking to Kamal Swaroop on anything but Bollywood and we were discussing his uh, project on Dada Sahib Falke. So you spoke about in an interview I heard you said you were trying to capture his consciousness in a film. And when you're doing something like that, do questions arise for you as a documentarian that you are, in a sense, you're playing God with this memory of this person. So do you feel any responsibility to uh, recreating him authentically in some sense? They, they was, uh, uh, I think that must be a block in my uh, going right completely about it, you know, because first thing is I'm not a Maharashtrian, you know, you know. Mm. So, and I don't know the Marathi language, you know, so I won't have the legal right, as you say, but uh, it's, it's, I mean, I won't say now it's Falke anymore, you know, it's a kind of a a concept for me now. So it's not uh, a, a official representation of Falke or a national representative of Falke. Right. Now, very soon, before uh, Janaganaman, you'll have a one-minute capsule on Falke's life. I mean, they're going to start releasing it uh, mm. to, within two. There'll be an official Falke. You know. Right. So I wouldn't be interested in uh, official Falke, you know. And uh, whatever work I have done, it has uh, gone through my system. And uh, uh, it's me now. Hmm. So uh, the I like the subject because of its possibilities, not uh, doing a biopic on the Falke. Hmm. Okay. So I wanted to move then to a film that was kind of very factual in some sense, which was Battle for Banaras. So this is a film that took uh, a look at the vibrant campaign that took place in 2014 in Banaras, where there was Modi, Kejriwal and a whole bunch of other candidates uh, who were battling it out for the election. So... At the Q&A that followed the screening where I saw the film, you had mentioned that your interest was in the crowds and in the spectacle of it. And you presented it in a very detached kind of manner. So is that detachment something that you come to the project with or is that something that you develop through the process? This one was uh, uh, detached. The reason was that... uh, um, I, I, like I told uh, that day, you know, I was interested in this Elias Kennedy and, and I was reading his uh, Crowd and Power, the mm. book. And uh, when uh, this happened, the, when we came to know that the election is going to happen, so I thought I might, you know, uh, do something with this book there. So that was the main interest. Now, they, uh, I uh, wrote to a friend of mine who's a producer, Manu Kumaran, and uh, he said, yeah, I'm game, you know, I like to do it. But his interest was that uh, there's this going to be a battle between Kejriwal and Modi, you know, a mm. small man and a huge man, and it'll be fantastic And if Kejriwal uh, wins. So this is the idea he sold to his stock uh, uh, his shareholders in Georgia. He had a company there called Mediant. And uh, and they gave me a researcher also who was a bit uh, left mode and, uh, you know, close to the AAP group, mm. the intellectuals. But my interest was not that. You know. My interest was that here are we, a small unit. We have two cameras and we have two sound uh, recorders. And uh, there's this crowd, and these are the elections. 
and how they do campaigning and how they they contact what are their strategies how they work about it what are the conflicts between the different political groups and the the battle in the streets basically how do i record it and find a form for it not uh, i am seeing say this is this this is this you know not that kind of a thing mm. so uh, it it was a hard job you know because with so many little resources we managed uh, doing a, something like that and so that was uh, I, that worked for me very well you know okay uh so now you've you've done a number of different kinds of work so how did you make that decision to move from fiction to documentary or was that a decision that uh was you intended to make see the documentary for me is very easy because i have a lot of uh, i mean i've been working on the fiction i mean not making but working so uh, and i have fantastic information so on the m- on the spot i can construct anything you know so the documentaries come very easily for me you know effortlessly mm. i don't really think uh, something you know deeply like i just did pushkar puran in uh, ajmer mm. about the mythological stories in uh, pushkar uh, based on the text from uh, roberto classio called ka mm. which are the stories about uh, brahma and shiv and prajapati and hot sacrifice so if i am i have a small text and with that text i can i can uh, uh, see see something you know, you know so documentary fascinates me now because i have the fiction and i can see any um, random uh, unconstructed or uh, chaos i can give it a form through mm. the kind of a learning in fiction i have or trained myself over these years you know so it's very easy for me and cheaper and uh, in fiction uh, uh, the kind of a uh, production we have now you know like i mean now you have to go to film bazaar then you go through five mentors mm, and right. five producers so your authorship somewhere uh, you lose in mm. today's time you know because there are five heads working mm. and somewhere i am still uh, conservative in that sense that i don't like any control you know i mean no i mean i don't like somebody telling me do this and do that you know and so and it will paralyze me that i am catering to somebody or i am working for somebody that this is a total paralysis if it's coming on its own then it works fine with me you know and i'm happy creatively but so control then, so then you don't share your edits or anything with anyone you're the last word on it do you i don't need hmm. to do please suggest hmm i just don't go for that and most of the people also don't know you know what i'm doing right uh so as creators i feel like so much of our personality kind of determines how you do the work like you were mentioning that you don't want to have any control whatsoever and and so and it also affects how you present your work and yourself to the world so how have you what have been your personal challenges to overcome to be able to do your work see the uh, my reputation uh, not predictable mm. that i have to s- deal with all the time and of course is uh, can't control him that i have to and uh, uh, these things so so that's why my output is very uh, small you know but once in a while i get a chance you know but even if i get a chance uh, one film and um, it gives me kind of a self esteem for a couple of years you know mm. and you can live off uh, that self esteem you know mm. money now you know comes you know it's not not very i mean you can survive but you do some good work specific work something you like it gives you some kind of a ego boost a self esteem mm. and you can live off that mm. it's a very very good good interesting point 
so can you talk about like a big moment of failure that you've had and how you dealt with it moment of failure was that uh, when i had nothing and i used to go to film division and they had uh, these uh, 20 minute news reel kind of a thing and very little many and i was very depressed this was before you uh, made it so this is uh, during the period from say about uh, uh, uh so 96 to 2000 so i used to work uh, you know some film on khajrao some film on something mm. but the, there was uh, no spark you know mm. the my mind was not working there was no creativity at all you know i was a dead you know it's almost like uh, yeah it's very this art is very brutal business because you are very greedy and you want to possess people you know you want to become a because it's a craving for immortality you know mm. so this mortality is very minor mm. yeah also what oshim had said he said every film is a film about death so from this current lot of filmmakers that we have was there is there anyone whose work you you admire you enjoy uh at the moment i mean the in the non bollywood space in any space uh, uh there's uh, i mean in the uh like a recent uh, two year uh, back the batch from the ftr satinder bedi and navin and renu Savant, their diploma films are fantastic, you know, fantastic diploma films. Then, of course, there's Amit Datta, who's mm. fantastic work. Then uh, there's Ramani, who's a documentary filmmaker, fantastic work. So, in a way, these uh, people who are not into the mainstream but doing their own things, so there are a lot of people who are very individualistic. Uh, you can call them author. So there are like that. and uh, in the mainstream if you say i you know like like uh, anurag's work i like uh, vishal bardwaj their work hmm. and uh, what's next for you what is the next project you mentioned pushkar puran that is uh, over but uh, next i have one uh, uh, there's a novel called third policeman by flano brian he's a irish writer hmm. a very famous book he was a contemporary of uh, james joyce and beckett so i've been trying to make a film on that book i mean the first time taking somebody's fiction oh, it's called omnium so i'm working on that and i've been working for uh, that's in a fiction space it's a fiction okay. totally fiction and uh, a fantasy kind of a thing mm. and uh, after after death journey and then one of my favorite which is like in uh, om darbadar zone is called miss pamole all night cabaret so that i've been working for now what 20 years mm. so that would is my idea of commercial and these two and there's one more uh, film but i'm not writing that there's a friend from kashmir he is uh, uh, writing a film for me which is uh, just one night journey of the uh, kashmiri leaving shrinagar mm. that exodus of that night 1990 something so just one journey uh, over a night from shrinagar to jammu mm. in a bus so to a long film but just one night so that's what uh, i'll be focusing on mm. uh what advice do you have for today's artists filmmakers uh she like uh, i had predicted after this uh, digital uh, revolution that the people are going back to their regions and they're going to be representative of their own people and that is uh, has begun mm. people are going back to their places working with their own people and representing those like uh, earlier time the novelist was a a historian of his own town right and he'll be there and 
write a novel over a period of five, six years, you know, that kind of a possibility is coming, like digital uh, novelist kind of a thing. So a lot of people in FTI are doing that who don't want to get into, say, Bombay space. Mm. So, I mean, they will find their audience and I think they will be able to survive because uh, they don't want to be very, very, uh, you know, like uh, rich or something. But they they are doing what they like and they have developed a certain kind of aesthetics that uh, Bombay films are not going to satisfy them. And they want to do their number. So that kind of, a, it is becoming a mass movement. And uh, you will see the result very soon. Mm. I mean, within two, three years. I think that's already happened to a great extent with Marathi films, especially. You see Marathi it. films are uh, still uh, not going back to uh, the roots. But they have a certain kind of a uh, theatre background and a sense of uh, comedy. So if you actually see that uh, Umesh, mm, Umesh, he stopped, you know, because uh, uh, we hear and these films worked. Mm. But suddenly now you have, say, the films like Ventilator or in that middle way zone. Mm. They are surviving in the Marathi cinema. But the Vihir kind of a spa- uh, film don't have that kind of a space. Mm. Or his film uh, flopped, The Highway. You know. Right. Okay, uh, I just want to wrap this up now. Thank you so much for being on the show. We wrap it up with our last question uh, where I ask you and uh, I can recommend a film that uh, people can watch. Well, any kind of film. Uh, Nazarene Bunwells, uh, Ran Kurosawa and um, Pasolini, every film. All the films of Pasolini. The Pasolini is a must. Okay, I haven't seen that. I will check it out. Mm. Ran, of course, is classic. Uh, my recommendation is Le Quattro Volte. It's an Italian film. And it's basically, it's about these states of being. So I think he starts the film with a goat. And then the film becomes like suit. The, 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 he, the changes matter. He's suit in one film. And then, and then he becomes into water vapor or something. So it's a very interesting film because for a lot of the film, you're just following a goat. And it's, I found it very fascinating and it really stayed with me because it really made me think about those states of being. This omnium I'm making, uh, it's based on the theory that uh, we made up the same atoms. So if you are riding a bicycle, a certain amount of uh, atoms from the bicycle enter you. Mm. And a certain amount of uh, atoms from the rider or human, they enter the bicycles. So the bicycles become half human and the <laughs> human become <laughs> half bicycles. <laughs> or the road you walk, mm. so the you become a bit of a road and the road becomes a bit of a you. Thank you so much for being here. I think I, I love your films and your work because it's important to me that things have a sense of humor and it has a sense of humor while being also very creative and innovative. So thank you for being here. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is your captain speaking. Sorry to say, but there's been a slight delay due to the apocalypse having suddenly begun. As you can see, there's death, destruction and chaos taking place all around us. But don't you worry, food and drinks will be served shortly and I would recommend checking out IVM Podcasts to get some of your favorite Indian podcasts. We'll keep you going till this whole thing blows over. Thank you.